So good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Keitaro Sakamoto from Morisawa Company. On this final day of ATI Pi, we hope to give you some inspiring, stimulating story to your brain. Today, we would like to talk about artificial intelligence. I'm not an expert on this field, so it's me who is looking forward to seeing what would it be like on this stage today. We have Tetsuo here, who has been leading our AI project for a long time, so I shall entrust him with the difficult parts of the story. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm no scientist, but um, I'm a leader of this project, and I'm planning to talk nothing difficult. Um, let's begin with some facts that we would like to share first. Uh, first of everything, we shall state that our project is very much experimental. It started with a simple question. Let are an invention of human beings, and they evolve together with tools. So what if tools themselves made unbelievable e evolution beyond our imagination? What would happen to letters? A few years ago, we had a chance to see an expert in this field and to ask about our question. By the way, um, do you have any idea what AI is? Yes. For example, uh, AI by Google makes painting. AlphaGo plays a board game of Go. And Microsoft Stay pays Drew public attention with this, its extreme tweets. It seems like we are watching entertainers. Um, it certain is uh, beyond people's common sense to understand AI. I recommend you to learn machine learning and deep learning. The other day, NVIDIA, who involved uh, GPO, published their statement regarding this topic. The first and the most inclusive idea is AI machine learning, which appears next, is including AI. And uh, deep learning, uh, which appeared lastly, is included in machine learning. A word of AI came in front of public in 1950s. I know that in 1968, uh, a, a Space Odyssey was released in the film. There is HAL 9000. Um, yep, that's right. Uh, at the time, computer was not that good, as it was said that computer never wins a chess game with a human champion. Computer's ability was not that high back then. This was over 240 years later, though. After a while, so-called machine learning, which is a method of learning a tendency analyzed from massive data for particular purpose, became popular and it's still used today. I understand. So that is why spam detectors for emails or a recommender function of Amazon improve their actually more and more as they are used. Um, as you see, as you feel, it's already in their life. It's running in the background that you just don't see it. Um, after that, uh, mainstream of AI today is deep learning. Machine learning grows as long as data is continuously given. It improves its recognition as human beings study by themselves and strengthen their knowledge and recognition. Um, there's neural network, which is a key for this system. It's called deep learning because its studying process on neural networks become deeper by making it multi-layer. The learning layer gets multi-stratified and feedback to itself repeatedly. By dividing into colors or details or sectioning areas, as a result of GPU's extreme development in performance, it became possible to use system with a much faster processing speed and machine learning. Besides image recognition, translation and speech recognition are also able to be improved its accuracy. AlphaGo is utilizing it too. Hmm, it it's really interesting to know that the uh, AI is learning uh, like uh, human beings. And my daughter is almost one year old. And she has recently started to speak two words. She knows her daddy and mommy. I'm not sure sh if she understands words meanings. However, she apparently begins to know that I have to turn around at her when she calls me daddy. Also, my five years old nephew is excited in learning letters. He practices letters tracing the model because even tracing the model is difficult for him. 
he was instructed by his mother with making an orbit correction so many times. He's making his effort to acquire how to draw straight and curved lines or the shapes of letters by making so many countless times of mistakes. Well, um, I think he's doing great. And after all those efforts, computer finally made a win at a game of Go against human. Um, by now, I assume basic information about AI is understood. Now we would like to explain how we, Typeface Maker, became to work on AI. Keitaro, can you please explain us about our production process of typefaces? All right. Uh, when we produce Japanese typeface, we work as a team, not as individual, but as mainly divided four teams. These are key design, uh, expansion, checking, and formatting. Once concept of typeface are de decided, a designer makes major 500 letters. These 500 letters are key design which have many parts in common, many other letters. Next, several designers uh, work together in order to expand letters in accordance with required character sets. This workflow is basically dealt with handwriting. Some had 3,000 of characters or 10,000. We also have more than 20,000 sometimes. These are to be digitalized one by one. As you may know, it is not yet end of process when production of letters is completed. We output some of the heavy use vocabularies and check them with tons of sheets of paper. In this step, we repeat small modifications small modification of design. Finally, we change this, uh, we create this golden must, we change this golden master into required format such as OTF or TTF. This process takes at, uh, at least a year for one style of font. Oh, that's a massive work, isn't it? We would like to focus on working more efficiently, especially the process of expanding letters. For uh, professional use, it's better to cover as many fonts as possible since it's more convenient and leads trust in customer. However, as you imagine, to expand letters is extremely hard work. If we stop handwriting, it may contribute to efficiency of our work but handwriting is a core part of our quality. Besides, we need more radical change. Therefore, we paid our attention to AI that can keep working 24 seven. So we, sh we shouldn't teach them how to shadow out the power, should we? And I assume your plan is to train uh, AI as a type designer. What exactly are you doing for that purpose? Um, we have two big tasks. One is to extract features out of existing typefaces. Uh, the other is to use these features and make design of a new typeface. OK. Oh, by the way, do you have any name of this AI? Uh, yes. Uh, we treat him like uh, one of our colleagues. We call him John, um, John Morisawa. I see, John. So uh, let me bring a question again. How does John learn the features of typefaces? Uh, let me explain image recognition with using deep learning. Uh, part of AI, there is a neural network. When we pile up a series of the uh, neural network and have them to study each layer, at the upper layers, the more complex shapes are able to be recognized. Because uh, typefaces consist of various elements, we prepared some layers of the neural network that is corresponding to each element. Um, here's a simple illustration to show three layers for um, easy understanding. Uh, in the pink, the first layer's job is to extract lines. And the second layer extracts a stroke, uh, which is a gathering of lines. And finally, the third layer recognizes a gathering of strokes, uh, which is a font. Hmm. I got this basic idea. Could you please explain each layer's role uh, a little more in detail? Okay. Um, let's take a look at this character as a sample. 
on the extracting lines, a combination of an ending point and an interior point is recognized as a line. And strokes are recognized from the relative position of combined informations of lines outputted from the first layer. And lastly, a character is able to be recognized with a combination of stroke information, which was inputted at the second layer. And John has that little knowledge about character itself, but he's good at image recognition. He breaks characters down into uh, small pieces and uh, gets to know each piece's characteristic. Uh, for example, um, with the image of this kind, uh, he know it's an H, uh, he know it's a line. Or with this, it's an angle. Uh, the first layer works on these things. Um, then, let's see what's going on in John's brain. Uh, in a simple kanji with few strokes, uh, here's how he reacts. Each layer of his intelligence is working on image recognition based on each layer's role. They cooperate each other and study several characteristics of lines, such as edges or tilts for designing typefaces. So he's now understanding given specimen and studying features of uh, characters. I understand how he studies. After then, uh, how does he create typeface? Um, his status is now at keeping a bunch of memories with him. Uh, from there, he'll, he will recall uh, memories. Uh, we call its process ignition. Each layer extracts a node, a gathering of what each layer studies, and then we ignite them. AI is going to reproduce a character with these. Well, wait, isn't it just copying the inputted characters? No, no, no. Um, from the information of memorized features, uh, AI is drawing a font. He's actually drawing a font. Uh, we can say that he's doing the same thing as your nephew uh, tries to write a letter, uh, trying to uh, reproduce things from an experience of studying. So how much level is he able to reproduce? Hmm. Uh, let's take a look at this. Um, in order to write this letter, uh, he learned 550 different styles of the same letter. And this is what he tried to write an indicated letter with a specific style. And this is what he tried to write an indicated letter. It seems this has a long way to become professional. <laughs> well, well, that's that. <laughs> Uh, John is compressed in order to keep an uh, enormous uh, volume of information. Mm -hmm. In the uh, process of developing them, noises, as you see, or defects cannot be avoided. Uh, so there is no limitation of AI's memory, uh, but it has an, an, it has an aspect like human beings. That's correct. Um, in other words, uh, he's uh, full of possibilities. Now he's like a child. He's a kid. Uh, on his way to grow up, we are expecting him to do more studies and to become able to do the following things in the future. Okay, so uh, for instance, uh, like uh, feeding a certain style to the input image, let's say um, there's a you know, Polish famous uh, artist, uh, Jan Matiko, and for the style and the input uh, on the bottom, you and your lovely daughter. And uh, we would like to be able to do the same kind as you just saw. The idea of generating a font very similar to some famous calligrapher. Uh, the approach is not like uh, tracing the handwriting of the calligrapher, but John is at, uh, actually drawing in uh, the character by his experience and knowledge he acquired. Mm, very interesting. So John can draw anything and he, he doesn't need to uh, take a break. So I, I bet not every type of designers are going to be friendly with him. <laughs> well, 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 yes and no, and you know, he's a nice guy. Uh -huh. He is a nice guy. He's just super smart. Okay. Um, but, but we are the tutor, and we are not trying to withdraw the whole process of uh, type design. 
more likely we are trying to manage a slight weight control and generate a multi-language. Uh, first of all, fonts are subject to be seen for the public. Uh, the screening process of the typeface is the most important issue, and we can't accomplish this without the Vitron eye typeface designer's eye. Hmm. I was getting a bit worried about uh, 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 us getting kicked out of this room. Uh, by the way, my nephew gave me my daughter a birthday card the other day. Okay. Uh, he got so better in one month. I wouldn't say this is a perfect model, but uh, don't you think he got sense in drawing a line? Totally, totally. I agree. What is John's learning speed? Uh, there's some angles uh, to explain about that. Uh, his learning speed is uh, remarkable, and the accuracy is getting better day by day. Uh, he's working on the task to decrease the noise uh, when ignite the memory so that more clear image uh, will come out. So not too far from today, uh, John's ability of memorizing and execution will exceed ours. And this is an uh, um, illustration, the movie illustration of uh, what's going running in the background. Uh, but most importantly, our task is to give him the right direction. Uh, this evolution of AI as a tool is uh, limitless. But at the same time, we are the one to be tested to control the tool. Let's take a look of uh, this list of jobs at high risk of being replaced by machines in the next 20 years. Uh, it seems uh, mm, typeface, is, typeface designer is not included in this list. Mm, that's good. So type designers never become slaves of AI in the next 20 years at least. That's so true. That's so true. So um, John is not your enemy. He's lovely, friendly. Um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>